the sound of Manchester. And all the music you love. BBC Radio Manchester.
everybody agrees, everybody agrees. I'm always rooting for the anti-hero. Taylor Swift's anti-hero be- BBC Radio Manchester, good morning. 12 minutes past six on Friday, the 6th of January. We made it uh, to the end of the first week, working week, if you like, traditionally, uh, on uh, the first week of 2023. Not going to lie, uh, the early starts and getting back into the swing of it have been a struggle. <laughs> and it just feels, doesn't it, that you wake up and it's dark and you go home and it's dark and let's face it they don't call it january blues for nothing Uh, but as ever we are here to kind of brighten your start to the day just to make it that much more palatable um so on the way this is what you can expect great chat uh, really interesting news stories some fab music as well we're going to have some fun we've got manchester mastermind uh, to play you today of course uh, today's secret location is just around the corner as well so we're at the ready get um, get prepared for that i know that uh, that's really popular uh, and you love playing along and uh, so i'll tell you all about that on the way but i just want to go back to something that richard mentioned in the news there the Manchester accent has been voted the sexiest in the UK. Uh, now, th- there's been a survey of around two and a half thousand people, and it was revealed that the Manc accent was thought to be not only the sexiest, uh, but also the most trustworthy. Interesting. Do you agree? <laughs> I. Do you know what? Yeah, like a manc accent. Yes, I'm, you know what? I'm going to own it. It is sexy. Of course it is. I'm going to be proud. I'm going to wave our flag. Listen, it's better than some others. I'm not going to even say the region in case I offend anybody, but you can do that for me. <laughs> I want to hear from you. What would you deem as the sexiest accent in the UK? Is it a Manchester accent? I quite like a Geordie accent and a Scottish accent. Now, I know that not everybody would agree with that. Um, That is a divisive one. The Irish accent is always up there. Uh, What would you say is the sexiest accent? Or what accent can you not tolerate? That it goes through you. It's like nails down a chalkboard. Come on. Well, let's have a bit of fun this morning. Who do you think, which region has the sexiest accent? And which accent really winds you up. 81333 on the text. Start your message with the word mank. Let's go. Girls. You can WhatsApp me. 08000 321 333. Start your WhatsApp with the word mank. I'm looking for the sexiest accent, please. I'm feeling all right. Didn't get the slightest one name And now, huh, can't let you go You didn't even tell me, baby, now That you could be sweeter than anyone else can, baby You sure know how to be a woman, yeah And you know how to let a man be a man i just like to say the L in my loving, the S in my sunshine, and I'm so glad that you're mine, all oh 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 mine, 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 oh 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 First thing that you gave me, let me tell you what it was. I 
got a deal I can't refuse, no Billion dollars worth of good love band huh. And not a dollar's worth of blues You too cold, girl I ain't got to worry about no lonely nights, no Even when you're not at home, no, I don't, baby Listen to this, cause the love that we have going, baby Would you believe it? Listen Strong as King Kong, ha, look out Put the L in my loving, the S in my sunshine And I'm so glad that you're mine, oh, mine, oh, mine, oh, mine, oh BBC Radio Manchester. Good morning. It's Anna Jameson with you. Um, great to have your company today. I hope you're good. Hey, um, keep your sex coming in then for which uh, region you find uh, the sexiest accent, an accent that you really like. Uh, because us Manx, we've been named um, as the sexiest accent in the UK. Uh, also the most trustworthy in a survey. Uh, do you agree? Obviously, we're going to uh, fly our own flag, aren't we, and say, yeah, we're to die for. I mean, what can people expect? They're only human. Uh, but is there another accent that you really love that you can't get enough of? Uh, 81333 on the text. Start your message with the word mank. Uh, I just want to set today's secret location before we go to travel. Uh, and here's the clue. We do it every morning. Um, I give you a clue as to where I am in Greater Manchester. Uh, you've got to try and work out where. I am. Uh, so here's today's. Uh, granted its charter in the 15th century, this shopping destination is arguably the town's biggest attraction. It welcomes thousands of coach visits a year and, and this might give it away, it's home to the black pudding. Where am I? Okay, so granted its charter in the 15th century, this shopping destination is arguably the town's biggest attraction, welcoming thousands of coach visits a year. It's also home to the black pudding. But where am I? If you know the answer, get in touch now. Have a go. 0800 218 2255. You can text me 81333. Start your text with the word mank. So granted its charter in the 15th century, the shopping destination is arguably the town's biggest attraction. It welcomes thousands of coach visits a year and is home to the black pudding. Go on, have a pop at it. If you think you know, you can WhatsApp me. 08000 321 333. Start your WhatsApp with the word mank. More great music to bring you on the way, including Cat Burns. You've got Abba, uh, Michael Bublé around the corner, uh, House Martins as well to bring you very shortly. <laughs> First, let's have a look on Greater Manchester's roads in Stockport. There's temporary lights on Bramall Lane. That's at Trinity Gardens because of electricity work. At Turton Road is closed between Tottington and Hawkshaw because of a landslip. And there's continued rail disruption today. Only one service per hour between half past eight and half past four on Avanti West Coast between London Euston and Manchester Piccadilly because of industrial action. The advice is to avoid travelling if 
you can by train. Uh, but we'll continue to bring you the travel updates every 20 minutes here on BBC Radio Manchester. If you know your space invaders from your Pac-Man, you'll love the golden hour. The Golden Hour. Weekdays at 1. BBC Radio Manchester. What a good place to be Don't believe it What a good place to be Don't believe I Cause you speak a different language And it's never really hard to me Don't believe I Oh no Cause it's never been really hard to me What a good place to be Don't believe I Happy hour, BBC Radio Manchester. Good morning, Anna Jameson with you on the 6th of January. Thank you for your guesses on today's secret location. Keep them coming. Uh, Here's today's clue. Uh, Granted its charter in the 15th century, this shopping destination is arguably the town's biggest attraction, welcoming thousands of coach visits a year. It is, of course, home to the Black Pudding. But where am I? Go on, have a pop at it if you know. 81333 on the text. Uh, start your message with the word mank or you can WhatsApp me. Again, just start your message with the word mank and send it to um, 08000 321 triple three uh, right we're going to uh, continue to play that for the next hour uh, and it's the 6th of january which means that it is um epiphany today so it's the final day of christmas the 12th day of christmas i don't know i was walking to the shop yesterday where i live and i was looking around and it was giving me anxiety still seeing decorations up i couldn't cope with it outside lights one i saw a full-on christmas tree in the window and i was thinking this is going to give you such bad luck i hope you can take this down in time well friend of the show giles branworth yesterday tweeted that on reflection i think we'll be keeping the christmas decorations up until candlemas now, i didn't know this existed he says that's the second of february and it's allowed and there's life in the old tree yet i used to think taking them down by 6th of january was the rule but it's not so so i say let's keep that christmas spirit going I like the idea of keeping that kind of vibrancy going through January because it is a bit miserable. However, I just want to shut of it after a while. It starts to annoy me. I, I, it, I don't know. Am I on my own there? Maybe you keep your decorations up for a long time. And uh, I don't know, there's this one girl at school who used to keep up until March. Their family, I was like, Ugh, literally, I don't know, my chest tightens. 
Are you going to take a leaf out of Giles Brownwood's uh, book then and keep them up until Candlemas, which is the 2nd of February, apparently? I'd love to hear from you. Maybe, like Paul Lockett, um, he said earlier this week that he took his down on the 27th. It's like a panic. You don't waste any time, do you? I think you put them up on Christmas Eve. Uh, so 81333, start your text with the word mang. Do you know what I mean when I'm talking about the Christmas decoration anxiety? I can't be on my own here. Uh, the WhatsApp number again is 08000 321 Start your WhatsApp with the word mank. Right, coming up on the way, we've got our news headline sport. Um, Mark will be here with the sport even. A full roundup of everything you need to know. First, this is Cat Burns. Lovely. Oh, baby. in Greater Manchester are facing long delays due to unprecedented demand on the NHS. Life-threatening cases will take priority. The government says there are 42,000 more people working in the NHS compared to a year ago. Trafford Council have written to the government over the decision to house asylum seekers at a hotel in Hale. They say it's not suitable, but the Home Office says the use of hotels is a temporary solution. And Prince Harry has insisted he wants to reconcile with his family, despite accusations about them in his new book. He claims he was physically attacked by Prince William, killed 25 Taliban fighters in Afghanistan and used cocaine when he was 17. Greater Manchester's weather, a dry and bright start, but cloud will 
thicken through the afternoon. The odd shower later, highs of 10 Celsius. Mark has the score. Only one goal. Um, oh, wait. No, hold on. We'll go back, shall we? <laughs> I mean, there was only one goal. <laughs> was there? Well, yeah, here we go. Only one goal with a massive three points for City. Are you all right in there? No. It's I'm Friday, go back it? home. Thank it's you. Friday. Yeah, massive win for Manchester City. They're not going away. <laughs> the pressure is right back on Arsenal. They've closed the gap at the top of the Premier League, back to five points. The two super subs combined for the winning goal at Stamford Bridge. Gundogan's there as cover. De Bruyne picks it up, edge of the D. Now moves it out to Grealish. Low ball in right across the face of goal. And Riyad Mahrez slides in to give Manchester. Manchester City the lead! Grealish admitted afterwards that adapting to City's style of play has been much more difficult than he imagined, but that was a beautiful ball to lay that on a plate for Riyad Mahrez. Both players coming off the bench in the second half, as did youngster Rico Lewis from Ratcliffe, who impressed again. Guardiola compared him after the game to Philip Lahm. The Blues boss was much happier with their performance after the break. We played really good in the second half, in the first half, no. But something happened since the World Cup. We played games against against Liverpool, against uh, Leeds, against Everton, and the level we played was really, really top high. First half was not good, the second was, again, the level, but it's happened with many games. City's former Youth Cup winning captain Ben Mee was part of our commentary team at Stamford Bridge. The Brentford defender says that was the perfect start to a huge six weeks, which also sees the Blues face United, Spurs and Arsenal. Yeah, that'll give the, the group a really good feeling. Positive way to, to start this uh, important run of games and, you know, the whole group will be uh, be buzzing after tonight and, and that, that say that feel-good factor, that mentality going into into these games and, and I'm sure other teams will have been watching tonight and not happy that, that City have obviously gone and won the game. Eric Ten Hag says he'll be patient in reintroducing Jaden Sancho to the Manchester United first team, saying that footballers are not robots. The England winger hasn't featured for the Reds since October. I think he's now making good progress on the physical part, so um, and that will help him. And I think, let's say, I hope he can return quickly, but I can't say um, a termination of a duration, what, uh, how long it will be. United face Evans, uh, Everton tonight in the FA Cup third round at Old Trafford. That's your big match commentary from seven here on BBC Radio Manchester, also available on BBC Sounds if you're in the UK. The January comings and goings are underway at Wigan Athletic. Latics midfielder Graham Shinney's joined Aberdeen on loan until the end of the season. Boss Colo Torre is also attempting to bring some new faces in. We're working as a team all the time. Uh, we have a good group of, of, of people here uh, working in the background, uh, in the, the back room, sorry, and they're just keep doing a great job. And we, we all try to communicate, link to, to each other, get the best solution possible for the team to improve the squad, to make uh, the team better. We can go to Luton in the FA Cup third round tie tomorrow. Updates on that game from 5.30. Rochdale are just three points from safety ahead of their League 2 clash with Newport this weekend. Dale defender Aidan White says he's confident they've got what it takes to pull themselves out of trouble. Definitely. I think there's a massive belief in the squad. We're, we're halfway through the season. We've got a January, we've got a busy schedule coming up. So if we can get three points, you know, hopefully you know, we can go on, go on a little run, picking up points and, and things will look better for us. But like I say, it's only halfway through the season. We've got to remain positive and, uh, and uh, yeah, upbeat. And doctors in the US say the NFL star Damon Hamlin is making a remarkable improvement after having a cardiac arrest on the field in a Buffalo Bills match on Monday. He's been communicating with doctors by writing after waking up in hospital he even asked them if his team won the game against the Cincinnati Bengals okay thank you very much and um, we made it Mark to the end of the first week I mean yeah only four days but yeah we made it <laughs> it felt like a long four days and so why, if... why has it I don't know why it's because you just getting back into the swing of yeah, it but I've been here over Christmas I've got no excuse yeah that's true you haven't <laughs> what are you complaining about no. uh, sorry if you are working at the weekend by the way but I just need a moment just to breathe because I don't know why. I, th I think it is because it's the first week. It feels heavy. It feels like, I don't know. You it's know, always like this, though, isn't there. it? It's always yeah. like this. Have you managed to, like, have you got any, you know, fitness plan or anything in action as your January started? Have you, have you well, managed to not have a drink yet? All that kind of thing. Funny you should mention it, Mark. I am currently doing a fitness challenge. Oh, so, tell me more. Um, it's a 28-day fitness challenge. Right. So I'm on a plan and I've got to do exercise, like, well, a, a kind of like a structured thing and I follow it along. So it's not like I'm just giving a set of exercises. It's like a real-time workout. And I've got to do five of them every week. Right. So I've already done four. I've done four. That's good. I woke up this morning, my legs. 